Okay, welcome back to Learn Piezo, uh, org. And today we're going to be covering a uh, a different way to look at piezoelectricity, and this is looking at it through a similarity to uh, thermal expansion. So, as we mentioned earlier, uh, we said that. So we had the actuator equation, uh, which will say the strain in the ceramic is equal to the elastic compliance. Uh, multiply by the stress, which we're going to write as capital X, uh, plus the piezoelectric D constant uh, in the material and the electric field. And we'll just assume this is for a uh, piezoelectric material like this, or a spontaneous polarization like that, and we'll have a stress defined positive like this, tension, and the electric field will also define as, you know, in a positive direction if it is oriented in this direction according to the polarization direction. So this is a the equation for a piezoelectric material. Uh, but if you wanted to maybe make some of this easier to understand with regards to um, understanding it through thermal expansion, uh, this is what, what the equivalent thermal expansion uh, equation would look like. And this is valid and true for any material. So we have a stress or sorry, a strain, and in this case we talked about the strain in the three direction, well, we're going to call that three. Uh, so we'll call this three three uh, based on the conventions which are used, which is the elastic compliance in this direction, and this is going to be the three three, which is the uh, dial uh, which is the piezoelectric charge coefficient in that direction, and the electric field is also applied in that direction, and the stress is also applied in the three direction. So, the strain now, the strain in the three direction uh, for, the, for the other case is going to have the same effect. So there's going to be some type of compliance. And, and to remind you, compliance is 1 over the Young's modulus, the bulk modulus. Uh, so we're going to have that. And we're going to have some stress. Obviously, you for any material, you apply stress. You'll get some strain according to its compliance. And we'll say that's in the three direction. Um, and now we're going to add this. Uh, to a thermal expansion coefficient. So change in temperature is going to result in a change in strain. So this looks very similar to our piezoelectric equation. You know, except that we have this temperature change uh, dictating strain. Uh, and, in, and in the piezoelectric equation, we had electric field. And obviously, because of piezoelectric materials are real materials, they have this thermal expansion uh, relationship. But here, we're drawing a parallel in order to help you and help me understand what is, you know, what is piezoelectricity or how can I model it using concepts I may already be familiar with. So here, we're pretty much, we're very familiar with thermal expansion, uh, you know, as, you know, as materials ex heat up, they change, you know, shape, they get a little bit bigger. So, the difference in, in between thermal expansion and the piezoelectric effect, the converse piezoelectric effect, is this. When you heat a material, generally the entire material will expand. So if you have a material such as this, and you heat it up, you increase the temperature, you're going to get a bigger material. So the material will, you know, let me exaggerate a little bit, the material will get bigger. And originally it was, let's say, this size. And then it grew in all directions. So, and both in the length, the base, and the width, or the height, uh, all these directions increased in dimension. However, with the piezoelectric effect, as we know, if you apply a electric field in this direction, what we're going to get is that the material is going to shrink in the opposite direction and it's going to expand in the direction of the applied electric field in this case. And obviously, also, if you applied the electric field the opposite way, the material would get would uh, expand in the uh, uh, the width direction, and it would shrink in the length direction if you apply the electric field opposite to the polarization direction. So in this way, if you want to define uh, some type of uh, anisotropy uh, in this case, uh, uh, we would say that the electric, the piezoelectric, 
effect. So this is a three, three. Uh, assuming it's under constant electric field and this is the equation in the direction of the electric field so we're applying electric field like that also if we were thinking about this way so we'll call this 3 and we'll call this direction 1 so we're thinking about the 1 direction we would say the strain in the 1 1 direction dictated by the compliance in that in this direction also by the stress because we can apply stress in that direction as well nothing will stop us from that and now we're, we're, we're defining electric field as being applied in the thickness name uh, in other words in, in the 3 direction so we use this 3 1 where the electric field is applied in the 3 direction the strain is happening in the 1 direction and this is still 3 so the difference in uh, the corresponding thermal expansion coefficients is that you know we'll have this change in temperature for the three and we'll have this change in temperature for the one direction right because temperature is not a not a, a vector uh, quantity it's a scalar quantity so the difference is that this d31 constant is negative and and this constant is positive so whatever number you put in here it's going to be a negative number because it shrinks in the one direction as you apply electric field in the same direction as the polarization direction in the three direction but however the thermal expansion coefficients are always positive so let's say you wanted to model a piezoelectric material in a simulation you know uh, you know finite element program but you don't have uh, the piezoelectric you know functions available to define your materials what you could do is what you would do you would define your thermal expansion coefficients to match your piezoelectric coefficients so you, let's say you wanted to apply an electric field of one volt per millimeter and that one volt per millimeter through the piezoelectric d coefficient gives you some strain what you would do then you would say okay let me change my temperature one degree and through the thermal expansion coefficient, I'm going to get some strain. And you can define this thermal expansion coefficient and the d coefficient. So if, let's say this is 300, e to the minus 12 pico coulombs, oh sorry, coulombs per newton, or you could also define as that. So coulombs per newton, or you can define as the opposite electric field, so meter, or you can define as meters per volt. Uh, anyways, the negative 12. Uh, so you could and then you can say that okay the temperature changes one degree and the thermal expansion coefficient is this for the three direction so you can you know then you can define the thermal expansion coefficient in the one direction how, how much does it shrink you can define that as something like negative 120 which is a good number minus 12 your computer simulation uh, program won't have any problem registering this and computing your result The difference in thermal expansion and applying an electric field is, first of all, you'll have to know uh, which uh, that since temperature is a scalar uh, quantity, you'll have to be sort of guessing uh, how you want to apply your equations. Also, as we know, temperature can't be changed as fast as electric field because oftentimes we're changing, you know, the electric field and the piezoelectric material. You know what? let's say a frequency like 70 kilohertz which is an ultrasonic frequency and you can imagine I'm changing the temperature one degree at 70 kilohertz that's actually a, a he heating and cooling rate which is impossible so with piezoelectric materials we have this parameter electric field which we can change extremely quickly and cause the material to deform at that same rate so therefore this is the you know so the reason why we don't use thermally driven actuators except in some conditions we do use them but for high speed applications there's no way possible you can use a thermally driven actuator uh, to uh, provide ultrasonic actuation we can also understand stresses generated in a piezoelectric material so i i gave we gave this equation stress equals um, the compliance times the stress uh, plus the thermal expansion coefficient multiplied by the change in temperature. We're just going to leave it in these general terms. Just remember this is negative for, uh, for in three direction and, 
and positive, sorry, negative in the one direction and positive in the three direction, which is the polarization direction. So if you were, if you were looking at this thermal expansion sort of parallel and we want to calculate the blocking stress of this material, let's say the strain is zero, so we're completely clamped the material. So how would you calculate the stress in a thermal, you know, thermally activated material? Well, the stress is equal to this. So if you increase the temperature, and we're talking about the three direction where this is positive and this would be positive. So you would actually end up getting a stress generated which is opposite to the temperature. So you be you have this material, you apply temperature, the, the material wants to expand but you're restricting it. So there's, there's an effective compressive force, uh, in other words there's a negative stress which is occurring. And this is the exact same thing which happens in a piezoelectric material. When you have a piezoelectric material, we call this E, we have these boundary conditions, let's call that 3333 three, 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 plus D times the electric field. Assuming, let's say, that we clamp, completely clamped the material, uh, then we want to say that the ne negative of the compliance in the 3 3 direction and the then the 3D direction equals uh, D times E. So in the same case, we get a stress developed in the material due to the electric field similar in the similar way we would get it uh, developed in the uh, piezoelectric material uh, as well. And obviously you can see that, hey, if you allow some strain, if you define that some strain occurs, uh, for example, this is non-zero. For example, let's say it's zero, so it's 0 0.1 micro strain, let's say it's one micro strain, then you would you could actually define that. You would say that whatever strain did occur minus the stress which is occurring due to this clamping force, because obviously there's no true clamping uh, ability, you know, the material is always going to deform a little bit uh, along with the uh, material it's clamped onto. So if measuring that strain and, and measuring the uh, electric field applied, you can actually also calculate the stress which is occurring in the material uh, due to that strain which is, which, which is also induced from the uh, electric field. So in this video we draw a very important parallel and this may help some people understand piezoelectric materials a little bit better by this relationship to uh, thermal expansion. What we have to remember uh, with regards to simulating it, uh, electric field is a vector and temperature is a scalar. So we have to sort of uh, guess and, and adjust these two parameters, the D coefficient and the uh, alpha coefficient in our program if you want to simulate it. And the electric field, pi electric field and temperature, these products should be equal for the condition that you want. And you're going to be trying to look at the stresses and the strains developed in the material. This will work great. Except there needs to be one uh, addition. Normally, you don't have any negative. Normally, you don't have any negative thermal expansion coefficients. But you'll have to de you'll have to define negative thermal co uh, expansion coefficients in the directions which are not aligned to the po polarization direction. So you have to define your uh, direction. You know your polarization direction, thermal expansion coefficient positive, and you have to define this as negative. In the same way, the three coefficient is positive. You apply electric field in, in the polarization direction, you get a positive displacement. But however, these are negative quantities. So accounting for those as well, uh, you'll be able to simulate and hopefully calculate stresses and uh, hopefully these concepts and make piezoelectric piezoelectricity. Uh, a little more tangible. Thanks for watching.